Welcome everyone to this uh, session on the formation of a water stewardship acceleration forum. Um, this, is, uh, this joins a, a family of uh, presentations and discussions at the World Water Week on water stewardship. And um, what I'd like to do now is to sort of give you an, an overview of our, of our pr presentation. So maybe if you can, uh, Lena, you can go on to the next slide, which gives us the agenda. Yeah, so what we'll be talking, we'll be having here first a keynote, a uh, keynote speech, a presentation from Bert Olleman of the Department uh, of uh, Competition um, and Industrial Development in South Africa. We'll be looking at um, water stewardship in practice. And then we'll be going on to a session where we look at the, at the, at the introduction for this uh, water stewardship acceleration forum. And then we'll follow on with a panel discussion we have three panel members, uh, Kate Lamb from CDP, a large international NGO on environmental disclosure, Michael Alexander from the well-known um, uh, uh, company Di Diago, and Yolanda Lopez from um, UNESCO. Now, this is a panel discussion where people will be reflecting on the forum introduction, and then we'll be going, going into an open panel session. And this is where we want a lot of participation from people. So we're gonna be asking you, there'll be a poll coming up. We'll be asking you to respond to that poll uh, in an open format, but then also to use the chat line. To use the chat line, feel free to do that at any stage during this um, session. Just put your comments, your reflections, um, uh, any constructive thoughts you have around this. Because what we're doing here is we're introducing the concept of uh, a water stewardship acceleration forum, but the clay is still wet. There is still much that can be refined and adjusted and tailored to the needs so that it really uh, meets its objectives. And for that, we want to have an engagement of, of everyone here who's, in, who's, who's involved in these, in these discussions. So please um, use a chat line, uh, respond to the poll, and when we come to the open panel session, we'll be asking you perhaps to open your camera up and uh, speak to us um, about your concerns, about the opportunities that you see and how you'd like the way going forward. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Bernd Olleman. And uh, maybe, uh, um, Nina, you could go to the next slide where we, where we, uh, we see who Bernd is. There's, there's Bernd Olleman. I think you'll all uh, agree with me that he's a, a very fine uh, 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 looking man, and he's a director of the Regional Industrial Development Corporation South Africa, and he's been involved in stewardship in practice and looking at stewardship taking root. And he'll be talking to us about how, having taken root, what is the next step towards acceleration and scaling up a stewardship. So without further ado, Bent, please um, give us your thoughts and experiences of stewardship in action. Thanks, Eric. Um, let me dive right in. Um, you know, we are faced with a lot of challenges nowadays. Um, I'm sure you read news a lot, and there's all of this news about storms and floods and suffering and wars and COVID-19 and all kinds of other things. Um, and, you know, Nietzsche once said, you know, if you stare long enough into the abyss, the abyss actually stares back at you. So this kind of situation can scare you very easily. Um, and just hearing about these things can, you know, do, do a lot more than that. However, Einstein once said um, that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that we used when we created them. That surely applies to water stewardship and also to the situation that we find ourselves regarding water all over the world. Um, so I just briefly want to touch on some of the core concepts of water stewardship. Um, and how that relates back to why a forum is important, okay? Um, and so the kind of things that I'm going to talk about is going to be on collaboration, on individual participation, uh, vision, a shared vision, leadership, and an outward focus. Uh, firstly, let's, let's have a look at collaboration. So obviously, all of us who are here and who have been engaged in water stewardship, you know, we've been working together with others, okay? So the concept of collaboration, a collective... Uh, effort to do something is not new. We also know that the kind of problems we face today in, in society uh, are not, uh, you know, problems that you can solve linearly or unilaterally for that matter, simply because of the complexity that's involved. So working together is the only way to ensure that water is treasured for its key role. Um, and in doing so, it is 
working together as organizations, whether you are an NGO in private business in public sector uh, or, or academia or any other organization. Okay. Uh, one example of what we've been doing here in South Africa is the collaboration between the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, which is where I'm sitting, um, and the Nature's Program of GIZ on water stewardship over the last two or three years already. Um, but in the public sector, there's a lot more than that, that you can do. Okay? Um, and I think it's necessary to understand that the public sector's participation is not just limited to, the, to participation by departments of water, for example. Okay, which of course is one of the reasons why I'm here. Okay, so in the Department of Trade and Industry, you know, we, we, we have a cost cutting interest in, you know, industry and of course trade, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it is important to understand that the role of the public sector, therefore, can be across multiple departments, which again is, I think, a good reason why we why we should have this forum where public sector can actually participate in as well. So public sector, of course, can, apart from instituting you know, regulations um, and policy and things like that, it also is well positioned to influence and organize and convene and build and grow awareness and, and most importantly, to partner with the private sector and everyone else in this space. In South Africa, I'm active in the Industrial Parks Program. Um, and part of that activity has involved setting up an Eco Industrial Park uh, round table. Okay, which is based on an international eco industrial park framework. I'm not going to get into that, but the round table has demonstrated that it is a fantastic mechanism to actually bring all kinds of stakeholders together in an open forum. Um, we've also done more in terms of water stewardship. So the water stewardship has been included in our standard operating procedures for industrial parks, which is a broad program to standardize and, and assist industrial parks and special economic zones and industrial spaces in the country to operate you know, from a common base. Uh, South Africa has also, in other government departments, introduced in the past uh, a very successful program called the Blue, Blue and the Green Drop uh, Water Reports for local government, um, and also working for water. So there are many various activities that one can bring to the table when you start talking about you know, government participation and partnering with others. Water, as I said, is a cross-cutting theme. Okay. Um, and for example, you know, you you don't just want to get stuck on, you know, okay, well, let's tackle uh, water scarcity. Okay. Simple example in South Africa, we had Cape Town's day zero a couple of years back. That was a major effort and it resulted in some tremendous change, not just in the public sector, but also in the industry. And people in normal households of how they change their approach to water. Okay. Again, these kinds of learnings can be shared very well on a platform such as the Eco Industrial Park Roundtable in South Africa. And I would put forward that a forum such as this one uh, can actually go a long way towards uh, sharing learning um, across sectors, uh, you know, across different organizations, uh, what everyone is doing, because I think that's important. Um, but it also helps with understanding for the public sector, it will help uh, understand how you should uh, frame your interventions and your policy and your regulations and other kind of programs that you that you would like to bring to the table. Second aspect of water stewardship, of course, is um, every single one of us has a role to play. It is not just about large organizations, it's actually about every individual. Okay, and every individual here being from the CEO in an organization through middle management through the lady at the front desk, even to the cleaner in the bathroom. Because your cleaner, he might or she might not know anything about you know, water stewardship. But I can tell you one thing, if there's a water leak in the bathroom, they will do something about it. And that's what water stewardship really for me is about. Now, a forum like this needs to share all these different angles, okay? So it's not just bottom up, but it's also top down at the same time. And I think, again, you want to expose everyone to the same kind of thinking again, which is why we need a forum such as this. Thirdly, I think um, in a, you know, innovation is really crucial in this whole conversation. It's not about how we do it or you know, you know, exactly the programs that we do, but it's also what we do, okay? Um, that of course, very often ties in with competition. And when you're in the in, in industry, you know, very often the conversation is, well, you know, it's competitive, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not sure I can do this. Well, you know, if you look at the recent Tour de France, I think there's very clear evidence that you can be competitive 
but you can still work together. Okay, and I think, again, that is why we need a, a forum such as this. Okay, you need an open forum where people, even competitors, can come together and we public sector, sometimes, you know, we, where the trust relationship might not exist, where you can actually build that trust and that relationship. Okay, um, which really brings me to, to the next point, which is water stewardship really is about relationships. Okay, it is not about the organizations. It's not about what we do or how we do it. It is about the relationships, ultimately. It's about people. It's about this planet. It's about, most importantly, in our case, of course, about the water. And how do you get people together? Well, you need to, similar to our experience on the Eco Industrial Park round table in South Africa, you need to get people talking, okay, and sharing their experiences and, and, and their different programs. But lastly, it's also about a shared vision and about leadership. So what the stewardship introduces the concept of stewardship, which I believe it has potential to be applied across the board in society, in energy, for example, in environment, um, in the social sphere for families or for children, for example. So stewardship really is a critical approach to actually address things. We, our focus is outwards and not inwards. Um, it is uh, more based on a leadership approach rather than a selfish and an egotistical goal that we wanna, that we wanna achieve. Now, I would like to end um, just with a brief quote from 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6 and 7 in the Bible. It says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. I think the point here is, and the point I'm trying to make is a forum like this is not about you and me. Okay, it's about all of us together. It's about what you can do. It's what I can do, what everyone else can do. But it's also how do we go together to scale things, to accelerate the efforts in water stewardship through a shared vision, and how can we work together to lead others towards this? So I want to end with this. Um, be bold, take courage, dare to dream, push the boundaries, and let's do this together. Thanks, Eric. Thanks a lot, Bernard. Thank you very much indeed. That's really excellent. I mean, I, there's some take-homes there. I like the really the focus on beyond water. You know, Bernd is not from the Ministry of Water. He's from the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. That's got a lot to do with the economic powerhouse of an emerging economy like uh, South Africa. So that beyond water cross-cutting uh, uh, thing is something that came out strong from what you said there, Bernd. And it seems that you're walking the talk because, as I say, you're from another ministry. So I think that's great. And I think the other thing that really struck me was your example of leadership, that the office cleaner who's looking after the water leak is a water stewardship leader. And that means all of us can be water stewardship leaders. And this, this forum is looking at mobilizing that massive uh, uh, scale effect of, of everyone working together. So that's great. Thanks a lot, Bernd. That's, uh, that's a really great uh, keynote that sets us off. Now, I just want to remind everyone, um, get on the chat line. I think you know how to use the chat line. Have a look at the poll, uh, respond to that poll. And, um, and then be ready to chip in when we come to the open panel session. But now what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the, at the WASA forum introduction itself. And here we've got a four part thing. We are gonna have Claudia Pragu from the BMZ uh, who will give us an introduction. Now remember BMZ is the world's biggest donor within water. They're, they're, it's, and has been for a number of years. So they've got quite, they've learned a lot of lessons having done so many projects in so many countries over so many years. And we'll be listening to some of those lessons. We're then going to follow that up with uh, um, an, an outline of the forum from uh, HANU, uh, um, uh, forum from GIZ, and then also from Adrian Sim from the, the Alliance for Water Stewardship. If you don't know about the Alliance for Water Stewardship, then you should get onto that website. And you should find out what is the gold standard? What is the silver standard? What is the platinum standard? Get onto that website and find out what it's about. Because after Adrian, Sim, then we also got J Jason Morrison from the CEO Water Mandate. That is a UN compact organization. And Jason is, we're, we're very lucky because he's in the West Coast of Pacific. So it's really early for him and his colleagues. But they're with us here. And you're going to be hearing from them. And if you're curious about what it is that the CEO water mandate does, get onto their website and have a look at that. But without further ado, I should uh, let's go on to the, um, the video from Claudia. And then I think, Hanu, you will help us drive through this uh, 
introductory session also with your colleagues. So please, uh, Lena, let's have a look at that um, video. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this forum also on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Germany, together with many partners, actively supports stewardship to achieve our global goals. Climate change is already having a serious impact on water resources. The way our economies operate leaves a large water footprint. Water resource security is threatened in many regions if not managed carefully. Therefore, to mitigate the impact of climate change and to achieve SDG 6, we need to accelerate our actions. Water stewardship means collective action for shared water resources by responsible management. That means taking responsibility for one's own impact on shared water and working together with all users for sustainable management through coordinated and collective actions. This is because the levers for acceleration lie equally with the private sector, the government, financial institutions and civil society. With today's Water Stewardship Acceleration Forum, we invite you to a dialogue about what have been tried and tested in practice and how can we overcome bottlenecks in scaling up water stewardship. Thank you very much and I wish you all every success. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pragwa, for this opening remarks again. And um, let me take it from here. Um, so my name is Hanno. I work at the GAZ in the Water Policy Sector Program um, as an advisor there also to the BMZ. And we've been um, uh, we, we've been initiating the process that led us here today to this formation of this Water Forum. And you heard the name now many times and the title is somewhat speaking for itself hopefully as well um, but let me give you a brief outline of the basic concept of how we um, set up this forum so if you can go to the next slide so already today and during the last two days you heard probably if you joined any of the other sessions around uh, the business accelerator um, pathway on um, this quite difficult to change the water footprint of our global economies. And there's still a lot of work to do. And to put it in a nutshell, this Warsaw Forum sets out to be a platform, a mechanism, and to provide moments where this work can take place. And we heard now already from uh, Bernd Willemann no? a strong account for why the public sector needs to be part of this discussion. And that's maybe one of the shortcomings from, from other formats that are out there that we want to address in this forum. And we really have this dialogue there um, together with civil society, um, with including strongly the financial sector in this, uh, in this discussions, as well as the private sector you know, to find a common language and to exchange on our needs. We go to the next one. So the foundation of this whole process um, is a big, global ecosystem of global institutions and stakeholders. And I would count you into this one. No? Many of those are here today, but it's not limited. And Ben said that clearly, it's not limited to our water community. Um, nevertheless, um, this is an invitation. We go to the next one. And then in order to realize our ambitions for this Wasser Forum, um, we set up uh, an advisory and steering board. Oh, this is still in information. And we had talks with um, our like um, organizations that work in the field and the landscape of water stewardship uh, the AWS and see water mandate are here with us today um, together with CDP and um, water witness international and WWF SDC Rain water initiative TNC and some individuals so those were kind of the people that we talked to very early on and how to change uh, how to how to shape this format 
so it could be a platform to the benefit of all of us and where we can come together as a community of uh, water stewardship implementing organizations and then speak to an outside audience and for that we established a secretariat which is currently being led by the GIZ and co-convened um, for the first year by AWS and the Alliance um, and the Zero Water Mandate. And if we proceed to the next. So one of the tasks that the Secretariat is having is to um, cater working level events. We go to the next one. And through this working level events, we can really find as a community the inputs that we bring, want to bring to a high level event. We really want to bring together leaders of all these four sectors to, to you see up there. And we define the input that we want to bring to this forum. Now we can align on our acceleration vision, we can exchange and on bottlenecks and opportunities. Uh, we can propose, but also advertise our initiatives that we are driving already and together formulate those policy asks that we want to bring forward. So with the outcomes of this forum, we envision a, a better understanding of the needs of each of the sectors uh, when it comes now there's many fields of needs when it comes to data uh, to accountability and we can formulate our shared ambitions and arrive at shared pathways forward and how we can really evolve stewardship as an approach as a mechanism to achieve our global goals and we can form new coalitions and new initiatives which again and on a working level we can break down advance and therefore provide this mechanism to um, yeah, to work towards our overall objective, which is the next one, uh, which is really to work towards an improved enabling environment where scaling of water stewardship can take place. So I will leave it here for a very first brief overview of the basic setup. Uh, Eric said at the beginning, a place to wet, and we really invite all interested organizations to join this process. And I will hand it over here now to Adrian, who is first going to place AWS in this process and then elaborate on the objectives that we defined or that we drafted for this forum. So Adrian, over to you. Thank you very much, Hanno. Um, my name is Adrian Sim and I'm Chief Executive of AWS, that's the Alliance for Water Stewardship. And we are very pleased to, to see the Water Stewardship Acceleration Forum becoming a reality. Uh, it's been, uh, Hanno's given a, a fairly, uh, possibly superficial piece of background to how this has come into being, but it's something which many of us have been working on, if not explicitly, at least uh, uh, to some extent for many years. Uh, and why are we excited about this? Well, well, the, the clue is in the name. It's uh, the uh, forum we believe really has got the potential to accelerate progress, especially um, in areas where we as a stewardship community are, are, seen to, to, are keen to see, excuse me, stronger participation. And now for those who, who may be unfamiliar with AWS, we are a membership organization. Uh, our mission is to ignite and nurture leadership in water stewardship, so very much aligned to, uh, to Bern's uh, remarks earlier. Uh, our standard system defines good water stewardship and provides recognition for sites who meet the AWS standard. Our theory of change identifies three groups who are essential for achieving our intended impact. We have enablers, that is members, partners, service providers, who support the implementation of stewardship. We have implementers, that's those who actually do stewardship, who implement the AWS standard. And influencers, that's governments, public sector agencies, financial institutions who have that potential to scale water stewardship. And I would say over the last decade or, or more, we've been pretty good at engaging the enablers and I would argue also the implementers. For example, it now seems a, a, a long time ago that we had to make the case for the critical role that the private sector has to play in, in water security or for the necessity of multi-stakeholder processes to underpin stewardship. These are now well established and accepted. However, I think it's also safe to say that engagement with an endorsement of the private sector, the influencers to use our theory of change language is an area in which we need to up our collective game. 
So we're excited about the potential of the WASA form to accelerate that positive engagement in particular, not exclusively with the, uh, the public sector agencies, but that's our, our, the thing we're, we're most excited about uh, to help scale and embed water stewardship where it's needed most. And that ambition, I think, is reflected in the draft objectives um, that are uh, on the screen now. Thank you. Um, uh, now, as Eric was saying at the beginning, the clay is still wet on this. We are trying to get this going. We've uh, been engaging with a number of organisations on the way. We've, we've agreed to, to, to take this on for the first year as, as one of the co-conveners. These are the draft objectives we, we, um, we, we've come up with. They're, they're not finalised, uh, but the, uh, the, the, the things that are important here are, are really getting stewardship on becoming more prominent in political dialogues um, as an important part of the architecture to pursue global goals. Um, and also, as, as Hannah was mentioning before, the, the creation of, a, of an enabling environment uh, the, that is going to help stewardship to flourish and, and to facilitate targeted action and specific initiatives. So, so that's why we are excited about it with uh, an AWS. Um, we, see, we see that great potential in it to add value to the ecosystem of stewardship organisations that already exist. And one of them is is the UNCO war mandate. So I'm going to hand over now to to Jason to uh, give you his perspectives. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, we too are very excited about the proposition of the WASA forum. Uh, and I just want to say a few words about uh, why. And then I um, also have a slide after this that I will talk about uh, our provisional roadmap uh, that will get us through 2022. But um, I would make the case that water stewardship over the last 10 to 15 years has demonstrated its efficacy. Uh, there is a there there. I think anyone that's been in this long enough would, would agree with this uh, statement. But as Sanjeev Chada mentioned at the outset of the week, there's still only pockets of excellence in the area of uh, the business community's action on water, and we are not yet at scale. And from our thinking that, that, that's that been long overdue, the disconnect between what's happening in the business community and what's happening in the water sector and in the public sector generally in terms of investments in, in achieving our long-term in, in ambition around water. And bringing these stakeholders together through a global forum to, uh, to do joint problem identification uh, what are the levers of the enabling environment that will bring more companies into the fold? If we think about the real impact that we're looking to have on water, it will require policies that incentivize the action and also the public sector spend that we know is where the real investment will come from when it comes to getting ar around some of these problems. So as we look toward how climate change is gonna be disruptive on our water systems. And we think about this all hands on deck moment. It really is gonna be forums like this that bring the leaders from different segments of society, business community, public sector, UN agencies, and civil society organizations to try to come up collaboratively with these strategies and pathways for scale and impact over the next 10 years. So we're really excited about the, this proposition. And let me uh, talk through a provisional roadmap. Again, this is not fully baked, uh, but it there is to demonstrate that there has been some thinking into what this might look like and what some uh, key milestone events might be that we would look to to be able to uh, bring this um, forum to the public domain. So here we are in Stockholm, virtually in our in our in our offices with suits on and shorts on and barefooted. Uh, and uh, we are announcing uh, this uh, new uh, initiative. We think uh, that based on this feedback, there's an opportunity to refine uh, and adjust, and then really make a, a public uh, announcement around this forum in conjunction with COP22. 
In the intervening months, we also think there's uh, an opportunity to do some recruitment uh, and assembling of this uh, advisory and steering board, the organizations that will help really define where this organization uh, or this uh, forum goes uh, in the coming years with a kickoff meeting uh, sometime at the end of this calendar year. The, the th thinking behind this advisory and steering board is it would meet biannually uh, or semi-annually, I guess you'd say, and it would be uh, higher level uh, entities or members within uh, organizations. In between these meetings are what we were thinking of as working level events. These would be uh, practitioners that really understand the issues, have the on the ground experience, understand what some of these obstacles and challenges are, and can formulate some of the, the thinking so that it can be brought to these high level forums and discussed at the highest levels of these um, global institutions. The first high level event we thought that would be uh, on the radar, it would be World Water Forum uh, in March uh, 2022. We think there is enough time to pull together uh, a, a solid event. Uh, and then based on what we hear out of that event, uh, subsequent uh, iterations between the advisory steering board and working level events to progress work in the intermediate. Um, the three organization uh, secretariat of uh, GIZ, AWS, and the Sea Water Mandate, we think has some complementary uh, capabilities, uh, and we would be uh, trying to support this uh, forum uh, in the coming quarters. Um, uh, as we move forward. So that's where our current thinking is. Uh, hope people will feel comfortable giving feedback on this uh, projection uh, or roadmap uh, in addition to the provisional goals that uh, Adrian elucidated. Back over to you, Eric. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Jason. Thanks, Adrian and, and Hanu, um, and also your colleague from BMZ, uh, Claudia. Now, um, I can see that they were getting some comments in on the chat line and also some responses to the poll. So that's, that's great. Um, and I think then what we just remember to keep, um, keep uh, looking at that poll and maybe uh, add in your viewpoints and also with the chat. But we're now going to open up to the panel discussion. And we've got, as I mentioned earlier, three panelists. Uh, we've got Kate, Kate Lamb from the CDP, Michael Alexander from Dialgio, um, I'll just start my video there, forget that one. Um, and then also um, Yuanda Lopez from UNESCO. So to you uh, three panelists, maybe starting with, uh, with Kate, but then moving on to Michael and Yolanda, you know, the question there is, you know, what are the challenges and opportunities that you can see this forum should be responding to? Thanks, from Eric. your viewpoint. Thanks, Eric. And, and, and uh, you know, what would be required to make this acceleration work in practice? Over to Thank you, uh, Kate. All right, fabulous. Thank you, Eric. And thanks for your wonderful hosting so far. And uh, Hanno for inviting me to participate. And of course, everybody else who's been pulling this thing together. It's a labour of love and will continue, no doubt, to be a labour of love. And I'm glad to feel a love in the room tonight for the forum. Um, you know, we were we've been helping Hanno and, and um, Vasily in their in their thinking behind this forum. And like Jason and, and Adrian be before me can see the potential that the forum holds. It's the potential from my perspective really to catalyze ambition loops um, to ensure that the, the ambition that we are seeing, even if it is just pockets of ambition within the private sector at this stage, there's no doubt a large and growing number of, of financial institutions and uh, multi-billion dollar corporations telling us very clearly that they need stronger action from governments to secure the water resources that they need in order to succeed and thrive. This forum, I think, provides us with an opportunity to ensure that that voice is being heard in the right in the right contexts. And the, this concept of the ambition loop is that I've mentioned a moment ago is something that we work on within CDP, and you know it sits at the heart of the work that Jason does as well. It's this idea that bold, ambitious leadership from private sector has the potential to trigger and beget bold, ambitious action from governments demonstrating that the private sector is already acting in certain ways and benefiting from that particular behavior gives, uh, gives governments the confidence that they too can then move forward with the same level of um, with the same level of ambition and strike out in policy areas that they perhaps were perhaps a little bit nervous about in the past. Um, and that's, I think, 
one of the that, that's there's certainly the reason why I'm here tonight is the reason why CDP is leaning into the forum itself and helping to make sure that it is as, as successful as possible but it won't be easy right and we all know that water policy is really hard if it was easy we'd have solved it a long long time ago but it isn't and the forum I think risks being so broad and trying to please so many people that it loses its way and so I think fundamental to success here is going to be ensuring three points for me first one is clarity clarity of our vision what is specifically going to change as a result of this activity and and, and bringing that hyper specificity into the forum and into our thinking will help ensure that the boundaries that we set for the initiative are respected and maintained. Without those boundaries and without that clarity of vision, then we will, you know, it will just become this huge talking shop that will fail to, to ultimately deliver. And so an eye on what success looks like, put ourselves at, at 2030, what will have changed by then? What will the contribution of the forum have been to get us to that point? I'd really love to spark that dialogue amongst all of the participants and force us to think through and work through those knotty problems. Um, I said two, there, were, there were three points. I've just covered two in that one vision of, 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 um, of, of outcomes and, and boundaries. The final one, therefore, is it speaks to the point that Ben raised earlier, right? This beyond water concept, Eric, that you loved, rightly so. Um, we don't have, if we want to speak to, to ministers of trade, or we want to speak to um, financial regulators as the sweet spot for CDP, then we need them to be in the room and we need to speak their language. At the moment, the forum consists of water, water stewardship lovers, right? Practitioners, those of us that have been in this field for the last 10 years. We can't necessarily speak their language. We don't know it very well. We don't have those networks. If we are to trigger transformation in those new networks, then we must reach out to them. We must meet them where they are. We must use the language that they're used to. We must be less wet. Um, uh, perhaps we, we'll see this plaster start to dry eventually, but I think we can take a lot of the lessons that we're learning from the climate space at the minute, where I'm the, the, the high level climate champion lead for water. We barely mention water resources management. We don't talk about river basins. We don't talk really about collective action. Um, we do talk about droughts and floods and disasters and the melt, melting of glaciers because that's what the climate community understand. And so I'd love to see the forum reflect on this more and, and em embrace it fully. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, great, great, Kate. I mean, three really good points there. Clarity, concrete, realistic goals, making it narrow so it actually has some penetration and then going beyond love. You, you said, oh, you can feel the love in the room. And as you say, we're all, uh, we're preaching to the converted, but actually our target is the unconverted. <laughs> so, um, and then you also mentioned about how the private sector would, is, is leading the way. And that leads us on nicely to our next uh, panelist, uh, Michael Alexander, because he's from the hardcore private sector and he, his organization uses a lot of water. Uh, in, a, in a responsible way. So we're interested to hear from, from you, Michael. Yeah, ho hopefully you drink our products responsibly as well, <laughs> Eric. Um, yes. No, thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity. I'll be brief because I think uh, we'll put, push for time and it's important to hear lots of people's different views. And I, and I echo a lot of what uh, Kate said there. So yes, in essence, I, I welcome this. I welcome the need for better kind of high level coordination to unlock some of the bottlenecks that we've talked about to accelerate action or progress. Uh, I agree with a lot of what's been said. Uh, and I think uh, the particular kind of uh, slant towards public policy and government engagement and uh, that kind of opportunity there is, and perhaps even finance as well, is underrepresented in the water stewardship area. I'm quite sure of that. And I would strongly encourage that to be a, a, a kind of a spike, I suppose, in the new forums uh, del deliverables. Um, I completely agree with uh, Kate in terms of mapping out what success looks like. Uh, so although I'm very enthusiastic in principle, uh, I think everybody needs to be convinced that there's a compelling case for another organization, a high level coordinating organization, as I see it, as I see it with a very 
strong focus on public policy and government engagement. Um, and I think that case needs to be very, made very clear. And if it's to engage with the private sector, uh, then I think it needs to be a pragmatic and inclusive approach uh, and not uh, in any way a sort of high level elitist or exclusive approach. So I really think uh, we should embrace that inclusion as well. And I'll end just uh, sort of reflecting on, I, I might, personally, I'm on a bit of a mission at the Asia at the moment to engage uh, all our government affairs teams around the world and all the markets we work to enable them to mobilize them, if you like, give them the capability to engage with government on water uh, and to provide the materials to give them the confidence and the, and the uh, information to engage in water. They don't have to be water experts every night, but every day, every around the world, we're engaging with government around market freedoms, around tax, around whatever it might be at their bread and butter. But I want to add to that bread and butter water and to make sure they're equipped to do that. And I think what's up, this forum might well be able to help with that with materials. And of course, if we can share the materials globally around all corporates that all have such teams, then that would be really effective. So yes, in principle, very welcoming of the new forum. Uh, the jury's still out, obviously, in the detail, and that's been made very clear th uh, this evening. So I welcome that as well, but very happy to participate today. Great. So I think the, the, the future of the forum depends on what action it can take and what change it can bring. And I think there, uh, Michael, you are bringing a, a very good point that one of the things that the forum can do is to, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. That if there are ways of where the private sector engages with the public sector and vice versa, this can be expanded and replicated in different countries and different sectors. Interestingly, Bernd, he sits on a cusp between the private sector and the public sector because he's public sector, but he's working very much in the area of industry in, and uh, trade and competition. So I think that's a, that's a very interesting um, reflection, which I think echoes a lot of what you're saying. So uh, why don't we go on to Yolanda now from, from UNESCO. Yolanda, as, as a panelist, from your viewpoint, um, how would you reflect on, on, on this forum and what would be your advice for this forum? Yeah, thank you very much, Eric, and good night to everyone in this amazing panel. And from my perspective, this forum will uh, help in many ways. First of all, um, most of the uh, research made about or around groundwater resources or freshwater ecosystems follow hydrological science traditions. But considering that freshwater systems interact together with the social, but also the cultural systems of many cultures around the world, it is important to bring a different perspective to the table. And I think in this forum, this can be achieved by involving and integrating different perspectives and paradigms from other countries and from other societies, like for example, indigenous peoples. How indigenous peoples related to water has been uh, uh, well-documented uh, by Western science tradition as well. And uh, we can find uh, plenty of information about how indigenous communities, for example, uh, were water-oriented societies in some way. Everything was around water. They need to collect water for food and for their daily life activities. And so I think in, in this panel to bring the voices and the different perspectives of different actors that uses fresh water is one of the main challenges as well, to bring all these voices in a dialogue in which uh, reciprocity in um, in a respectful man manner, it, it, this can be a challenge, especially uh, um, today in which we are facing, uh, our humanity is facing so many other challenges like the COVID pandemic and food insecurity, etc. So I think this can be an opportunity, but also it's not going to be easy, as Kate uh, just briefly mentioned. And we need to work together. And for that, I think one important aspect is to build environmental literacy within, within the society. And environmental literacy does not mean formal education only, it means formal and informal. And this um, environmental literacy about freshwater resources is crucial for, for humanity. It's, this means to have the minimum amount of knowledge to understand how is the hydrological cycle in every region around the world. So people are able to develop the internally, the sense of taking care of something that they know, 
because for example, groundwater resources are resources that people cannot see if they get contaminated or if you have a karstic soil or if you have a very complex ecosystem, how water fluxes within this system. So the local communities, they have some knowledge that they have inherited from their ancestors and they know how to take care and also how to relate to water. And I think is what uh, most of our societies nowadays, um, I, I think is the aspect that that is, is really, really lacking in, in this game, how to understand how it works, how it fluxes, etc. So people can develop this sense of protection and taking care of nature. And yeah. this includes, of course, those uh, resources that are uh, the foundation of life on Earth. I think this is a this is a very interesting point you're making, Yolanda. You know, often this leadership is coming from the most unsu most surprising places. Bent, he mentioned the the office cleaner. Uh, we've also heard from Kate and from Michael that how the private sector. You know, you wouldn't imagine the private sector taking the lead in stewardship, but they see the self interest and they see the bigger picture. And I think you yourself are also pointing to the indigenous uh, groups where, where that is also where there's a lot, there has traditionally been a lot of leadership uh, in, in terms of water stewardship. So those are, those are very strong and you could almost say surprising um, uh, strengths in, in, in this concept. I think you, 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 you've, you've touched very much on the topic of inclusiveness, uh, which, which Michael also spoke to quite a lot. So thanks a lot to our panelists. Uh, we, we've heard from our, our very um, astute and uh, well-recognized panelists in this area of water stewardship. So now um, I can see there's been quite a lot of chat and some people are also responding to the polls. So we're now gonna open this panel up and what we'll be basically inviting you to do, that's anyone in the audience, please uh, put on your camera, uh, uh, put your hand up, uh, put your hand up like that, how you could do like that and tell us that you want to speak and talk and then put on your camera and give us your panel uh, contribution. So I am looking for, for hands. I'm looking for people that are gonna come and put their uh, camera on and speak to us. I see in the audience here, we have Litumelo from Zambia. Litumelo, you remember we worked together in Zambia on sort of water stewardship topics. Um, I think it was in the last century but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it was just in the beginning of this century. But if you're, if you're still around, please come with some points, um, your, your, your panel views. Um, can I see anyone with their hands up? Otherwise, we could also ask those people from the, um, who have given comments. Uh, Amanda, Ningwingwa, maybe, maybe you have some, uh, some contribution to make um, also on camera. And, uh, or, or Declan, Han, you also, and Mike Dodge, you came with some points. Adrian, are you, uh, are you, oh no, a, de, de, we have Declan here with his raised hand. So Declan, could I ask you to, um, uh, to yeah, you've got your camera on there. So the, 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 the microphone is yours. Good morning all, yeah, and thanks for the opportunity to share. I'm Declan Hearn working with a bulk water, SEQ water in South East Queensland in Australia, but I did wow. spend the last 10, 15 years in international kind of development space. And the key what, question what time, is- What time of day is it there? Uh, it's, it's seven in the morning, I five minutes ah. before I get the kids out the door to school, okay? Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you get on with it then, yes. <laughs> um, looking at the forum, a huge powerful forum, and Kate referenced the economic power behind the private sector. You know, it's a huge opportunities mm -hmm. to mobilize change. But the, the real concern I'm feeling at the moment is re-echoing what Yolanda was saying was the marginalized voices. Looking at the participants who are um, listed in the concept note, leading the forum, it's how can we make sure those marginalized vulnerable voices have a seat at the top table? And thinking about the process of engagement and hearing those voices from the site to the catchment to all the way through the process. So that's, I think it's a key point of concern. And Michael Dodds also uh, kind of touched on that in the comments. Excellent. Uh, you know, Declan, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this back to you. Can you give us one idea as to how to promote that better? Um, it's probably recognizing, if I think locally right here in Southeast Queensland with the Aboriginal communities, it's their capacity to engage. So recognizing that they don't necessarily have the resources to come to forums like this. So it's probably putting 
um, a capacity enabling um, in fund to bring those voices to the table, to bring them to the top table in your roadmap going forward, put some resources to think about um, bringing those strong voices to those big forums going forward. So instead of, uh, instead of high level uh, ministers in business class and suits, you'll be looking at some of the money being spent on bringing uh, some of the marginalized voices. If I go to Australia again, there's a Northern Territories Minister for Aboriginal Engagement, finding those, those people who, who, who represent those communities, but have a strong, strong voice and can come to the table and represent those voices. Great, great. Thanks. Thanks, Declan. I think that's an invaluable contribution. If, Thank if you we, all. If, if we do half of what you've asked for, I think it will have been a very uh, time well spent here today. So let's go on to uh, Felix Dodds. You had your hand up there. Felix, do you want to put yeah, on the that, camera? Thanks. Ah, I, I put the comments in that Declan was uh, talking about. And I think, you know, you've got to have a very strong uh, stakeholder mapping process. And so I don't know whether you want to look at accountabilities AA1000 as a basis for uh, how you might approach that. It gives you a, a structured and agreed standard uh, of doing it. And then, you know, it should always be an open process so that, you know, there may be groups that you can't engage with or don't see as important now, but who should, should be able to join at any process, any part of, uh, of the process. So mm. um, I, I liked what De Declan said, so I would just mm. support that otherwise. Thank you. Great. OK, I think it also echoes a lot of what Yolanda was talking about and also Michael and Kate. So maybe I would actually put this back to, uh, you know, to Hanu and to Jason and to, to Adrian, the co-conveners. What, what you, what's your response to some of the points that have come up from, um, um, uh, from Felix and from, from Declan? How, does it sound um, reasonable? It, does, is it practical? Is it something which the, the forum should concentrate on that? How, how, what, what are your thoughts? Just very briefly. I'll just they're, say uh, they're spot on. And these are uh, typically the, the, the perennial challenges with the global uh, discourse and policy discourse uh, forums, uh, whether those are organized and shepherded through the UN or other global forums. But this is a, a critical um, aspect of getting it right out of the gates uh, and of even taking the notes down, to, uh, Michael, to your point of, uh, I know the AA 1000 standard, but also just the, the critical need for strong stakeholder mapping uh, right out of the gates. And that probably would be vetted uh, by uh, and, and, uh, and supported by the advisory and steering body. We do have uh, a number of practitioners in the stewardship community that I think um, uh, will be able to help us make sure that we are, are doing this thoroughly. Um, Nick Hepworth and Water Witness International comes to mind for some of the work they do in Sub-Saharan Africa and there are others as well. Yeah. What, what, about, what about you, Adrian or Hanu? Do you have any reflections on that as, as, as hosts and co-hosts? Uh, does it, um, and then I think we'll ask you, you, Yolanda to, 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 to make a comment. Uh, yeah, if I if, if, if I'm going to just go briefly, I naturally agree with uh, with everything that's been been said on this topic, um, and I think that's what you, my remarks earlier were about um, engaging the public sector as, as a kind of area of uh, where we we haven't been as strong um, up to now as my organisation or or the community as as a whole, and um, that can mean, of course, a whole host of different things. And you know, we're we're absolutely with AWS. We're we're it's very clear and explicit that um, that our aim is is about inclusion, making sure that uh, that everybody stands to benefit, and uh, that this forum needs to be able to do that for us to for it to serve our organisational objectives. So it's it's really important that this has been brought up at the outset. Yeah. Um, so that we can set the course straight at the beginning. Yeah, and it 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 also works a little bit together with what Kate was saying because if you make it too broad, you'll dilute it and it'll become you know just a big talk shop. So it also has to have some focus, and that that's going to be a trick 
oh, that's going to be a difficulty that that you guys as uh, in the in the secretariat and the advisory board are going to have to steer past those rocks to left and to right. What about you, Hanno? And then we'll go on to you, Randa. Yeah, very quickly. So, um, Declan, on your idea of putting up a fund to make sure that those marginalized voices can join the discussions, absolutely. Um, very good point noted and will be realized. Um, second one, um, it's of course always difficult to talk about the D civil society. Somebody also put in the chat there's uh, it's, it's a lot of stakeholders and it depends on also where you look locally. There's, there's of course, an always local civil society stakeholders. But yeah, we are. And uh, we are really grateful for your feedback here. And uh, we know that it's a challenge to uh, make sure that uh, civil society is adequately engaged in this discussion. Yeah. And I like comment from Kate in the chat here that you not know, through the role of a co-host or co-lead for this forum, um, there would be one mechanism maybe that we can deploy. Yeah, that's that's really good. And I, I, I'm, I'm just keep back, um, come back to thinking what Ben said at the beginning about uh, the office cleaner being the water stewardship leader. I think that's uh, it's a good thing to keep in mind. Y Yolanda, you've had your hand up for some time. I think you also triggered some of these discussions. So yeah, I just want give, to give us a very brief wrap up. Yeah, of course. I just want to uh, make a comment about the a point made by Declan. Um, I forgot to tell in this forum that uh, indigenous peoples are getting well prepared and. Uh, for example, I myself, an indigenous, uh, I belong to, to an indigenous community and I hold a PhD. I understand perfectly how uh, the different approaches, frameworks and methodologies to, to understand hydrological um, problems. But the, so bringing these voices is not difficult anymore. It's only a way to find where they are located. So for example, uh, there is uh, there will be this uh, World Conservation Congress in Marseille this year, and there will be many indigenous uh, peoples which are bringing the, their voices there. So it's only a way to find uh, where they are and to contact them and to bring their voices. So, so will, will, will you and your organization join the forum? Um, I will be very happy to. Yeah, because yeah, then sure. you could you could you could then uh, you know um, walk the talk and, of and, and help I will the forum. Be very happy. Yeah, yeah, you do that. I think I think mm -hmm. that would be very helpful, indeed. Yeah. I can see there was a you know I think we're probably running out of time soon, but I don't. There was a there was a comment from Andrew Andrew Robbie. I don't know if 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 you're there, and Andrew, if you want to make a, a comment on camera. <coughs> I think you had some very good points there. Uh, we're having difficulty hearing you, um, uh, Andrew. Can you speak louder? I'm on the second glass of wine, so this might yeah. be completely incoherent. <laughs> Cheers. It's far too late um, in this country at the moment. But I just, I really enjoyed the interventions. I think this forum is a welcome opportunity, as I said in my comments, to align efforts. Uh, it, it, as Kate said, it's really important to get set targets for this. But for me, coming from the timber world, and I see uh, lots of parallels with the, the issues of stewardship and the work that I did, I did in Indonesia over many years on, on timber, is that in, we've, we've not fully engaged the market drivers for change. Uh, and, and that is through things that we can do as consumer countries in regulating the market to make change happen. And this is happening, we see in TCFD. I think I've frozen. I wonder yeah. if I've... No, you're, 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 okay, you're, you're, you're okay there, Andrew. It's it's working, but we've just got just okay. just half half half, half a, a few <laughs> seconds right. left before we, we have to close. A few seconds more, and, and 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 the second thing is is the role of civil society in holding companies to account. This this is what is going to drive change. Both both government and 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 private sector is getting these drivers of change amplified, and we're really keen on supporting this. So do come Great. tomorrow to the uh, the launch of this other work. That I'm, uh, Nick has mentioned. Okay, excellent. So that's uh, that's really good. We've had both trade and timber uh, going well beyond water. I think that's that's fantastic. So we've got to wrap up now. Um, this this session has been recorded. You can always have a look at that. And then, as I mentioned, you know, go onto those websites. Um, the AW the uh, Wasa Forum will have a website soon, so you'll be able to go onto that. But also the AWS, the CEO of Water Mandate, the Water Witness International, all these organisations that have been. Uh, mentioned they will be as relevant to um, to connect with those otherwise i think let's let's thank our hosts 
uh, especially GIZ, the hard work that Hanu and his group have been doing, but also all the background work from uh, the uh, Alliance for Water Stewardship and the CEO of Water Mandate and others. And our panelists, thanks a lot panelists. Let's give you a good clap. And thanks a lot. Okay, great. I think uh, it's, it's time to wrap up and for some people to go to bed, other people to get their breakfast. Bye. Thanks, Thank Eric. You. Thanks, Yolanda. Thanks a lot, Thank Eric. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.